Hi guys, Selena Walker here, naturopath, nutritionist and herbalist living deep in nature here at Esprit de Coid. And today I am with this amazing plant, Mugwort, the protector of feminine energy. Here in Wales, she's known as Aganorad Loid, Aganorad Loid. And her Latin name is Artemisia vulgaris, named after the Greek moon goddess Artemis. Now Artemis was the, the moon goddess but also the, the hunter goddess and was the feminine protector, the protector of women. So that tells you a bit about what you'd expect from mugwort. What I want to talk to you about today is more of the kind of protection and emotional and maybe more spiritual aspects of her because what I want to show you how to do is how to make a smudge stick from mugwort. White sage tends to be what's used in the alternative scene, spiritual scene, whatever healing scene, whatever name you want to give it. And the problem with white sage is it's on the United Plant Savers list. That means white sage is going to become extinct in the wild. White sage has been over harvested, has been raped, has been taken advantage of. And here in the UK, and in fact anywhere where you live, we should be working with the plants of our land, not importing white sage. And some people try to grow white sage in their polytunnels, great, fantastic. But also, there's plants of our land that we can use in very similar circumstances. And mugwort is one of those plants. And in fact, you can use common garden sage as well. I often make smudge sticks from both because they both are very clear in energy. So why do you want to use a smudge stick? Well you want to use a smudge stick for clearing the energy and I'm going to talk about why mugwort is really good for that a bit further on in the video when we come to the making but for now let's go for the harvesting. So I'm just simply going to be harvesting long bits particularly the ones that are still in flower there's a few that are starting to go over because they're so warm here. So I'm just going to take a good few strands. Thanking the plant as I go. Got a big smile on my face because I love working with mugwort. And that is probably enough for one wand. Now the problem is when, when you're working with mugwort and she's in flower, there's not much leaf. So what I would like to do, if I just pop that down there, I'm just going to grab some branches, some smaller branches further down that's got a few leaves so I can incorporate that in. And that's one of the reasons why I also like putting some common garden sage in with it as well so it gets a bit more leaf going and that can sometimes help when it comes to lighting which I'll explain about further on. So we've got a harvest. Time to make the smudge stick. Okay, so I've come further down in the garden where there's a bit more space on the ground. And I've, next to my beautiful patch of California poppies because it always chills me out in the garden. I thought it would give a nice energy to making my smudge stick. So the goal of me doing this is to hopefully get you off your white sage addiction and mugwort can help. So we've just harvested mugwort from the garden. And the one thing about mugwort is many people think that mugwort inhibits other plant growth. And you probably saw there's lots of other plants growing around mugwort in my garden. And I think part of that comes from because I still get weeds growing around her, but not quite as many, but the plants right next door are totally fine. But I think that is just her protection energy. So mugwort is great for protection and some say psychic protection. And mugwort does that as a plant. And I always say we can tell what plants do for us by looking at the way they grow. So if they're inhibiting growth of other plants, is there a protection element to the plant. So mugwort is the protector of the feminine and I'm going to show you how to make this and then we're going to have a chat as I'm tying it all up 
why she is the protector of the feminine and how she can help you. So we're aiming to get from that to that. It might end up being a bit bigger, but the beauty about you making your own smudge stick is you have the creative license to make it as you want to. So you simply, what you're looking at doing is tying it all together and bending it down. And you can make as big a smudge stick or as small as you want to. So I'm just lining everything up here. All the little bits in as well. You want to try and get the bottoms lined up. And what I usually do to start with is I'll just tie it off at the bottom because it makes it a lot easier. Now, I always use hessian because if you use a plastic string, it's going to smell when you burn it. Because what you're doing, for those of you that don't know about smudge sticks or have never used one, a smudge stick is kind of like an incense. And what you would do, you would light the end in a flame, obviously in a safe manner, being careful that nothing's going to burn and make sure that if anything drops off it, it's not going to burn your house down but what you're looking at doing is lighting the end and then like an incense stick you would just blow it out so it's not on fire and allowing it to smolder away and then you would use that in ceremony or just to clear the space so quite often if I'm holding any ceremonies or circles or even teaching I will light one and just clear the space because she has the ability to clear the energy and you can use many herbs for that it's just today I am talking about mugwort so I've tied the bottom off and what you're looking at doing it works better if the top is bent over so you can kind of almost bend it in half so I've bent her in half like that and then you'll want to tie it again so what I tend to do then is tie it a bit further up to tie in the bend So as I said, mugwort is amazing for the feminine protection. And these days, I think many women are feeling the patriarchal society that we live in, the imbalance of the feminine and the masculine energy. As women have to go out into a masculine world, work, and then we come home in a very masculine energy. And working with mugwort can bring you back into balance because we are all masculine and feminine energies and it can mugwort can help balance that so if i get clients and they're trying to connect more with a feminine energy or they've got female issues and also they they're really strong in that in that masculine world you know they come from business meeting to business meeting work 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 and haven't got the softness and the gentleness and the flow of the feminine energy then i will quite often add mugwort into the prescription to just rebalance that feminine energy and bring them back into the feminine being now mugwort can also be worked with for lucid dreaming i've made mugwort pillows or you can simply sleep with one of these under the pillow if it's burnt you're not going to want to do that because the child end will stain the bed clothes so you can do that before you start you working with the smudge stick and you will just simply put it under the pillow or sleep with us by the side of you and i always find i have an amazing night's sleep but she really helps you remember your dreams so you can integrate the dreams into your life and also the smudge sticks you can use for when you come home from work to get back into that feminine energy for psychic protection before you're going out into the world and mugwort was used a lot and still is in fact in acupuncture if you've had moxie then that is mugwort being burnt onto you so what i'm doing now i'm just tying off the string so i've got i've got it tied in three solid places and you want to tie it as tight as possible because what you're going to do you're going to leave this to dry somewhere so the tighter you can get it the better now what you want to do is just make sure it's all nice and tight and then work up. I've got a little crawly something in here that I'm going to try and release. Let's just undo that. 
you go. What are you? There. Oh wow, you're actually connected to Mugwort. You're actually in there. Wow. Don't know what you are, but I'm going to release you and put you back by the Mugwort. Let's just undo all that work I've just done. Tie that off. Cut that there. And cut that there. Wow, I don't know what that is. An amazing uh, creature. Don't know if you can see that on the on the film. Let me come forward. Look at that. Wow. Right, so I'm going to put that back by the mugwort. Bit of distraction there. <laughs> and let's get back to our stick. Just putting that bit out the way. So let's retie those sections that I had to undo to release the amazing worm-like creature caterpillar. I'll have to look what, what grows on mugwort, what caterpillars like mugwort. Right, so as I said, we just tie in mugwort off in three places. So you've got a good tie at the top and the bottom and the middle. Pull in it as tight as you can. So when it dries, it doesn't all fall apart. Now that you can see that's a bit messy. And now what we're looking at doing is tidying that up. So we simply go into wrap around. So again, starting by tying at the bottom and you want to start right at the bottom. By right at the bottom, I usually mean like about an inch, two inches from the bottom because you want to be able to grab it with your hand. And then tie, I just do a double knot. For those of you that are not experts might be saying there's better knots you can do. And all I'm gonna do now is wrap the whole stick. Obviously I'm working with quite a large stick here. You don't have to work with as big a stick. And once you get to the top, you're just gonna go in the opposite direction to almost crisscross everything you've done and just keep pulling so it's really tight you want to hear the string tighten up and I mean I'm never I'm never kind of trying to make a pretty pattern or anything like that I'm just going for practicalities but I'm sure some of you out there will make amazing smudge sticks I've seen some beautiful ones online and not I've never seen photographs of what they look like dry it's much easier to make them look beautiful when they're at this stage. So you can see with mugwort, you get lots of wobbly bits. So what I tend to do when I'm doing a stick with mugwort, when she's in flower, is I just usually go around a bit more. And if you hold her like that, then you can see the bits that need a bit more tie-in a bit easier and you can aim to get them. You won't always get them and you won't get them all, but you can aim to. And you can see you do need quite a bit of string. And that is why I'm saying you want to use natural string. Now with the top bit, just make sure that she is bending over. If you've got any bits sticking up, you can always cut them off. Like that bit there where I had to cut for the caterpillar to get out. There we go. And just really pull in tight. And the smell is amazing. In fact, you'll be getting mugwort medicine while you're making this. And I'm just going to go up and down one more time now. And then once you've gone up and down enough times and it looks quite tight, obviously it's depending on the size of the stick you're making, then all you simply want to do then is put it somewhere where the stick can dry out. Now, what can be good is to leave a bit of string or put an extra bit of string at the bottom with a loop on because it dries out a lot better if it's hung up. So in fact, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be hanging this up to dry. With the smaller ones, like you can see the difference in size here, they don't might matter so much, but what you wanna do is try and get this dry in quickly because you don't want the bits in the middle to go moldy. And there we have it, a 
beautiful big mugwort stick. So all I'm going to do now at the bottom is I'm going to tie it off. Again, classic double knotter. I don't know much about knots. I am always make them up as I go along. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to tie on an extra bit for the loop because I don't want to make the end bit a loop because I don't want the loop to stay on, on there permanently. So I'm just going to put another bit around, tie a double knot, and then tie a knot over my fingers. to create a loop so I can hang her up now in my house and leave her dry and you simply leave her dry until she feels dry and then you've got your mugwort wand that you can use for protection, protecting the feminine energy, for balancing the feminine energy, for clearing energy and just bringing that beautiful healing magic into you. I hope this has inspired you to create your own smudge sticks from herbs in your garden. I've made smudge sticks from mugwort, from garden sage, from the purple sage, the green sage. I've even made them from rosemary and thyme. So I'm really inviting you to rethink your white smudge sticks. I'm really inviting you to rethink your white sage. And in fact, I've seen mugwort sticks now being advertised as a black sage sticks to try and encourage people away. White sage is becoming extinct and it's because of our use of it. So we need to take responsibility and part of that is connecting with the herbs that are native to our lands. That the herbs that would have been used by the druids and the medicine women and the medicine men from years ago our ancestors would have used these for exactly the same purposes I've talked about today in this video. If you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps get this information out there to others and spread the word. You can also connect over on my website selinawalker.earth and sign up to my free newsletter where I send out hints and tips on how you can create a healthy body, a healthy mind and a healthy planet. I'll see you soon.